Hey everybody, this is Birch, and uh, a question I've got from a reader, I think I memorized it before I hit the road here, but uh, I'll get the gist of it, um, is basically, why don't we see more um, strength in numbers? And the person writing the question was going into, like, you know, would we ever see a comics union? Um, I've done a video on that, I swear. I mean, at this point, I'm thousands of videos in, and I've forgotten what I've done and what I haven't done. Yeah, plus old, you know. I'll say it, mobiles, you don't have to. Uh, but... The I, I think I've talked about this before. The idea of a comics union is uh, is close to impossible, just based on on kind of the the nature of the business and how freelancers are used and all the rest of the stuff. A union would be very difficult. Um, but one of the other reasons that a union would struggle is that uh, people who work in comics, the uh, the you know the the freelancers, the independent contractors, the the creatives. Um, they tend to struggle with the idea of working in a group. Um, not always, and, and I'm going to get into the details of this, but generally speaking, there's a lot of, um, I don't want to use the word paranoia, but there, there becomes this, this very strange behavior. And it's, it's not with everybody, not by a long shot. And there are groups, of course, that have formed in comics. And, and actually, if you look at those groups, they've tended to help each other out to you know, pretty strong mutual benefit. It was an open secret, or it, you know, everybody knew that Bendis uh, had his group of people that he would, um, you know, that, that were within his orbit that he helped succeed and help get positions. And then when he moved over to DC, he brought some of those people with him. And and there's a there's a group there that looks out for each other on a much smaller level. You could argue that uh, you know Tom King uh, with like Mitch Gerards and um, I mean that Tom and Mitch are. A, uh, a, a unit, that's not a euphemism, they're, they're a group, and they have helped each other out. They've helped each other out get gigs that, um, you know, uh, they wouldn't have gotten elsewhere. Uh, well, it's hard to say, right? We, there could be some alternate timeline where if, like, Mitch Gerards had aligned himself with James Tinney and he'd be doing twice as good. I mean, who knows? But at any rate, the grouping did help. And, and you see plenty of that. And you can go down the line of kind of, uh, creators who had people that they work with. I mean, clearly we've seen with Donny Cates and Ryan Stegman now, uh, but but um, more often than not, these groups tend to mistrust each other. Um, and by the way, those are the ones everybody knows. But there's this whole other kind of dynamic of people, and you've heard little bits of it. Um, I think we, you know, we've heard about uh, Scott McCloud helping people out, and we we've heard. There's, there's pockets of stories everywhere. There's also people in the industry, uh, writers or artists, that you know, take it upon themselves. Nobody really asks them to, but uh, take it upon themselves to be good mentors or look out for each other or be the, the designated driver, as it was. Um, there, there are groups of people. Um, there are certainly friendships in comics. And then there's friendships that do a little bit more. Friendships with benefits. Not, not those kinds of benefits, but benefits in terms of looking out for each other and kind of helping push things along. Um, but there, like I said, there is an equal group of people who tend to be very paranoid of one another and tend to view groupings like that with a lot of mistrust. And we've seen the consequences and fallout of that as well. Um, and I think that's, that's one of the big reasons why you don't see as many people band together. But I think by any objective measure, if there was more camaraderie, if there was more working as a, as a group, working as, a, as an effective network, um, you would see things get better for quite a few people in comics. Um, most of the groupings, especially on YouTube, the groupings are often described as sinister. There's been the, the Whisper Network and kind of these different Facebook groups that people have talked about. And certainly stuff like that exists, but... Um, the, the more positive groups, the ones that we, we don't hear about, the groupings of comic creators who, you know, help each other out, who help let people know where, when they should be pay taxes. They, they help uh, pitch in if a deadline is getting near and somebody needs to ghostwrite a couple pages or things like that. There, there is a lot of that that goes on. And it's not, gla it's not, you know, it's not glamorous. It's not overly dramatic. It doesn't make for a good video headline, but it does exist. And... The fact that, that it exists in this kind of smaller, quieter format um, is the peculiar part is why those positive efforts aren't noisier, aren't more public, aren't more, um, you know, aren't more out in the open. Because 
there, you know, the old as the old adage goes, there is strength in numbers, and certainly there's some strength in comics if more people worked as you know a collective unit. Uh, but jealousy, uh, pettiness, um, the, the feeling like somebody is getting a gig you should have gotten, all those kinds of things definitely come into play, and they come into play in a negative way. And I think it's created this um, this feeling within a lot of people within comics that they have to keep it underground. Now, I'm speaking kind of uh, uh, generically, and it's hard to kind of address this topic um, in any way but generically without kind of revealing some confidences or anything else. But I'll tell you, and I, I'm sure, you know, any creator who's listening to this has their own stories. Uh, there is a, you know, very well-established um, feeling within comics that, uh, you know, there there's some people who look out for you. And there's other people who will absolutely, you know, stab you in the back. And because that feeling exists, it tends to push people away or they, they, I I don't know. I've got a lot of, of kind of different thoughts on this. I think in some cases, the comic creatives, both the uh, artist writers probably tend to skew a little bit more isolationist uh, by nature, maybe a little bit more introverted. Uh, Having met a lot of uh, people, uh, many of them are, are, uncomfortable uh, around big groups of people. I think it's it's one of those factors that comes into play with the cons, but I also think it's it's inherent and just, you know, they've been working from home. They've been doing what a lot of us have been doing for the last year via COVID for their entire career. And so, you know, they're, they're not used to working into an office. They're not used to these kinds of politics. The politics that they see are coming to them either secondhand or through a telephone or, you know, from an arm's length or from a lot of gossip. And worst of all, I mean, I've heard people describe kind of comics office politics, you know, like it's like Mad Men. It's like it's it's nothing like Mad Men. You you should you should stop watching TV. You're 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 you're, you shouldn't take your uh, office politic uh, cues from, you know, Bravo. That is a that is a bad idea or or AMC or name your channel. Um, But a lot of people do because that's all they've got to work with. Um. It's one of those areas where I do think one thing comics needs badly, I know I've talked about it in other places, is it, it comics badly needs some, um, I don't know, or lack of a better word, moms and dads. They need, they need some mentors. They need some people at the top who can say, hey, look, uh, in, in, the, in wrestling, they would refer to this as like the locker room leader. Um, not a formal position, doesn't come with uh, any kind of title, but it's this informal kind of role of this person who's, who took it upon themselves to kind of look out for, you know, new people coming in, help them get on the right foot. In some cases, settle disputes. In other cases, remind people who are, you know, getting too arrogant too fast that they're, uh, they're, they're getting up, you know, um, up over their skis, as the saying goes. Uh, that, that's something that comics needs, and it's something that comics really doesn't have. You know, there's various people who can act informally like that. Um, I recently heard some uh, nice stories about Simon Bisley of being uh, kind of somebody who looked out for other people. That was awesome to hear. I don't know. That just made me feel happy inside to think that, you know, these people who are, you know, actually trying to look out for, for others. But if you think about it, how many problems, how many of the, the things we've dealt with, um, how many of those would have been nipped in the butt by just having some kind of senior person who's been through it before, who knows how some of this stuff works out to say, hey, you know, not the right approach. Try it this way. Or, you know, this this is going to burn a bridge. That's not going to help you or, or any of us. Let's let's back away from that. It's um, that that's a role that is needed. Um, hands down is desperately needed in comics. And I but I but again, I think, you know, the other dark side of that is I, I suspect at least this is where maybe I share some of the paranoia of uh, some of the creators that a lot of people who are corporate, who are the full-time editors or the people higher, you know, that Tom Brevoort or higher level, um, they don't want any kind of organization. That that erodes kind of their ability to, you know, demand price breaks or manipulate kind of who's on what book or keep people hungry. Um, one of the things that, that I can say firsthand, having talked to, uh, uh, this goes back a ways, 2007, I guess, uh, some, some senior people at Marvel at the time. You can draw your own conclusions. But uh, but basically, the atmosphere of it, it's good to keep your creators hungry. And they don't mean starving. They just mean, you know, not comfortable. 
they mean, um, you know, that they, they have at least, at least some concern, you know, they, and this, this probably springs back from kind of a lot of very old traditional feelings about publishing that existed for many, many decades. And I think was reinforced in the nineties where a bunch of artists kind of got in their head that they could uh, go off and do it on their own. I strongly suspect that that lesson is being digested at Marvel and DC right now as uh, writers hop over to Substack. I'm sure for a lot of people, it feels like deja vu. It once again feels like a betrayal. And it's one of the crazy things about corporate uh, managers is they are uh, they don't see the paradox. They don't see the hypocrisy of they like to keep people at arm's length. However, if uh, one of the people they're keeping at arm's length goes off and finds a gig that's good for them, um, they, they view it as a personal betrayal. It's, it's very, very peculiar. Um, I know, I know, I, I know a couple people, uh, at Marvel who feel some, uh, betrayal from Nick Spencer. Just, just feel like he screwed them over. And it's irrational. Of course, he went out and got a better deal, but it's, uh, it's interesting how that, you know, it's like, well, we, we want to keep our people at arm's length. Um, but, uh, if they ever uh, go into business for themselves, then they've, they've screwed us personally. That's, you know, one of those human nature things. But yeah, to answer the question, things would be much better if there were more groups. A uh, full-blown union is, is not viable for a lot of reasons. Unions have to have some way to, you know, some leverage, which uh, in this structure they do not have. But just being able to have some, some grouping, some mentorship, some locker room leaders, it would go a long way. And I think it would solve a lot more problems than you might think. Anyway. There you go. Good question. Thanks for asking and uh, thanks for listening.